Mm. Very good. Can you all see me? No. We do. Uh, I just want to see the screen. Mm. What did I press? Sorry, I just lost myself. Uh, okay, did you all mute your, your your screen or because I can't see you all? Uh, well, well, you uh, you can see you all. Okay, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, welcome <laughs> to uh, the Holaris Extraordinary Meeting. Um, in um, um, uh, in the very um, interesting time whereby we have uh, the uh, pandemic going on, so we're having this virtual meeting. And uh, my apologies for one or two of my other panelists who will be joining us later on. Um, I'm, my name is Francis Wong. Um, I'm delighted uh, to chair this session uh, when I was invited by Frank to chair this session on faith accession for all with my esteemed uh, panelists uh, from different parts of the world. And it's very interesting when, when I look at the brief, the brief is a few light being text. Many think that text individuals and firm escape faith taxation, and some firm are expert at multi-location tax dodging. Some manage to obtain COVID-19 financial aid means from which are meant for small firm. And I know that uh, many of uh, companies, even in Australia, the bigger one are getting a lot of incentive from government and the smaller one are struggling to give the, uh, any sort of uh, good incentive back because of the threshold business. But uh, how do we address the pan-continental taxations uh, when many nations, uh, even town, hope to attract big business um, with the tax break? So the question is, who is fooling who and who are the ultimate decision maker? I actually originally came from Brunei. And uh, when I was asked to speak on this session, I had to declare that I'm not a tax expert. And in Brunei, I don't pay tax at all. When I moved to Australia mm -hmm. years ago, I have to learn the word tax very seriously because everyday conversations about tax, I have to attend the university to learn more about tax. So I must confess and declare that I'm not a tax agent, not an advisor, but I'm sure that after this session today, I'll learn a lot more about that. Uh, just a bit of background by myself. Um, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I spend a lot of my time traveling around the world. My business um, range from uh, international tourism, uh, I sit on the Australian Government Tourism Australia Board, appointed by the Minister, uh, attracting international tourism. Uh, my other interests include um, international trade investment. Uh, I was the chairman for the Council of International Trade and Commerce. I look after 40 countries, Chamber of Commerce and Business Council, um, and also um, uh, spend a lot of time to look at other interests as well, like football. I sit on the Football Federation, Australia's Australia Board, and I was on the A-League Soccer Board. Even though I know nothing about soccer, I was on the uh, car racing board. So this uh, semi-retirement job that I'm doing in Australia. Okay. Currently, I sit on the Brunei Economic Development Board as an international advisor to the Minister of Finance and, and Economics. Uh, I also... A representative for Beckhamex IDC in Bing Jun. Those who've been to uh, uh, Horaris conference in Vietnam two years ago, uh, Beckhamex hosts the event. I represent them uh, in Australia, New Zealand. They are one of the biggest uh, industrial park owner in Vietnam. As you wear the Vietnam is the uh, hottest, um, uh, what I call it, uh, um, FDI destination. So today I'm delighted to be joined by uh, uh, five panelists, uh, and I have four here. and. Uh, and I'm looking forward uh, for Gasper to join us. 
The first um, panelist is Mr. Paul Tan. He's a member of the European Parliament, EU. And, um, and Paul, like I mentioned earlier on, congratulations. Um, you got elected to the EU Parliament Subcommittee on Taxation. And uh, I saw your inauguration the other day. So Thank well you. done, Paul. Uh, that was fantastic to have you on board today as well. Um, I have Gustavo Gore. He's the Chief Supply Chain Officer of Kimberly Clark. Um, yeah, United States company, but he's based in Switzerland at the moment. Uh, his previous company is Smarter Chains, uh, uh, based in Switzerland, involved in AI and manufacturing. So he has got, uh, he's uh, looking after multinational companies, which is fantastic to have you on board. Um, and, um, uh, the next uh, guest uh, is Toshihiro, uh, Yogoshima san. How are you? Good. I had a long Thanks. conversation with, uh, Toshima san last week and even before you guys came on board, uh, we seem to have a lot of very common interests in that. So he's the CEO of Mercurial Investment in Japan. Um, so the theme today is fair taxation for all. And I say that, uh, uh, fair, it, it is a fair question. The question now is who is asking the question? Is that the payee or the pay, uh, payer? So it is the big operators or the corporate. So taxation means different people, mean different things to different people. But I think it's very topical now to talk about uh, taxation and fairness. And um, very often people don't like to pay tax. But in this situation whereby, uh, with the global pandemic, a lot of government are giving uh, financial stimulus and they seem to get a lot of money back from government. And certainly the, the theme of, you know, or am I paying too much tax or am I getting money back from government? So the, um, the discussion is quite topical in terms of the benefits of paying tax because you will get something back in return. So I will actually now like to invite my panelists to start uh, with a two minutes introduction about themselves and the theme, and then we'll open for discussion. So the first panelist I would like to invite is uh, Mr. Paul Tan uh, from uh, uh, EU Member Parliament, European Parliament. So, Paul, over to you. Okay, thank you. I will, I'll give a short introduction. You already said it. It's very topical, <laughs> very relevant. Um, governments are spending a lot and need at one point to bring uh, spending and income uh, back in balance. Uh, and the question then will be also, will also be, um, who will pay for the for the revenue? Who will bring in the revenue? Who will pay the taxes? So that will be high on the agenda for the years to come. And I think the main focus will be on those that do not pay their fair share of taxes uh, and or do not pay taxes at all. And there I have now some uh, that are obvious. First of all, the big polluters don't pay, so we need definitely to clean the tax system. That's one. Uh, second, um, some of the big corporates, the multinationals, are very uh, are very good at many things, including tax avoidance, um, and they are able to by using um, different uh, uh, different ways in within the tax system to shift profits around, so they determine where they make profits and where they pay taxes. It's not for all big corporates, I would say, but that leads to an unlevel playing field. So it's not even if you pay taxes and the other company does not, that it's not efficient and it's not fair either. Uh, and third, I, I think what you will see is there will be a crackdown on tax avoidance by the by the very rich. Uh, economists have been able to find out uh, based on the leaks of Panama Papers that of all the wealth that is hidden uh, in places like Bermuda, Bahamas, and the, the offshore tax havens, uh, as they are called in Europe, uh, the, the half of this wealth uh, uh, goes to not the 1%, but the 1% of the 1%. So it's not even, you're not even, you're not even rich if you belong to the 1% in this world. Mm -hmm. No, you have to be the 1% of the 1%. That enables you to, uh, to, to hide your wealth and, and to avoid taxes. I think we will see, uh, and, uh, we'll see serious uh, changes there starting, I hope, in Europe. Uh, but I think also the G20 will discuss this, uh, in the many years to come, starting on October 14 when the ministers of finance will join and uh, start to discussing the proposals by the OECD on corporate income tax. 
but as a way of my introduction. Thank you. Very good. I must say that uh, Paul has been a member of the European Parliament uh, for the Netherlands, and he's a member of the Labour Party, part of the Progressive Alliance for the Socialists and Democrats. So between 2007 and 2010, he'll be a member of the representative of the Netherlands and be a member of the Parliament for 2014. So I thought yeah. I need to, to elaborate that position. Uh, fine. Thank you. Can, can I just add to that? Because you don't have to be a, a social democrat or uh, be a left-wing <laughs> politician to fight uh, tax avoidance because, like I said, it's an unlevel playing field and also I think there's throughout the political spectrum, people find it unfair if we play by different rules. That's a fair comment. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, Anthony Travers, who's supposed to join us on uh, Cayman's Island, uh, I think he has some technical problem. <laughs> um, and um, but anyway, he might join us later on. Next, uh, I would like to invite uh, Gastuva Gori. Uh, he's the chairman of the Smarter Chain Switzerland. Uh, he is also the uh, chief uh, supply chain officer of Kimberly Clark, uh, a U.S. company. Um, he has got uh, 35 years of deep experience with the consumer product industry, goods industry, and spending several key senior leadership roles uh, in uh, Proster and Gambos, and most recently, of course, I mentioned the Smarter Chain is a technology leader focused on creating agile manufacturing operation manufacturer around the world. So um, that should be very interesting to hear from you in terms of multinational company, supply chain, and uh, uh, digital economy. Over to you. Thank you so much for the introduction. At, uh, uh, I have to say that at this very moment, I am not the chairman uh, of, uh, of Smarter Chains anymore. I'm still involved with this uh, amazing startup, which is a Swiss company that uh, we are so proud of that, uh, the potential uh, it has in the industry. It's uh, so simply amazing. We can talk about that uh, a lot. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I have a, 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 a long history in the industry, and, uh, almost 40 years involved with um, uh, production systems. And I was uh, lucky enough to, to, to uh, to contribute to the direction in the in, in the future of production, especially in the area of digital, and, uh, and the startup of uh, Smart Exchange, the co-founder, uh, which is uh, really an impactful enterprise for for the future of uh, of operations uh, globally. Um, uh, the, the subject of taxes, of course, is a very interesting topic. And it's very very like uh, everybody feels it on the skin. Uh, is, is this thing that we have to do, but we wish we don't have to, and uh, uh, all, all across. And uh, it plays an amazing role into the into the uh, enterprise in general and supply chain management uh, as, 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 as a whole. As, uh, as well, supply chains are set, uh, taking advantage of not only the, the demographics and socioeconomic development of the countries where we play, but also uh, where we could have an advantage from the tax standpoint, so cost, uh, et cetera, et cetera, becomes more even. I, I, I love the, the way Paul talked about, about uh, making it a, um, an even playground where fairness is in play. And it's very difficult to, to achieve, of course, but uh, um, the way I took the word fairness is that um, the tax structure should not prevent us from free competition and, uh, and elevating and, and improving life of our consumers, life of the users of our products. It should be a way, uh, actually an enabler, to uh, an, an leveler, leveler of the playground to free uh, competition and be able to provide the best products possible everywhere in the world. Um, I guess as a, as a matter of introduction, I just, I probably leave it like this. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we will talk about this topic, uh, I hope, uh, during the conversation today. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to invite uh, Shima San now to come on board. Actually, um, I, I guess um, he has got a lot of uh, um, experience in sharing with us. Uh, so he has been, a, he's now the CEO of Makuri Investment uh, Japan. He joined the uh, Development Bank of Japan in 1985, where he led many innovative and pioneering projects. Uh, in the electrical department, uh, project finance department, and also introduced private finance in initiative uh, and turnaround project. He also worked for the World Bank as a senior deputy director uh, in charge of the private sector while supervising several 
uh, growth investment uh, with uh, Development Bank of Japan. Uh, he has become one of the founder member of uh, Mercury Investment um, in, in 2005 and was elected CEO uh, in October 2008. So uh, he um, has got a lot of experience uh, in terms of uh, uh, helping Japanese um, uh, individuals, high net worth, and corporations to invest in Japan, outside Japan, and um, very well versed in terms of uh, taxations and uh, globalizations. Over to you, Toyoshima-san. Uh, okay, thank you very much for introduction. Uh, my name is Toyoshima, and uh, of course I'm not a tax expert, but I have seen tax issues from various viewpoints, including from the World Bank and also uh, from the private sector. Today, I, I first explain my my observation of as a CEO of the private company Mercury Investment, uh, which is a listed company on the main board of Tokyo Stock Exchange. Uh, our main business uh, is private equity and alternative investment fund management. So we, uh, I, I am fund manager. Uh, currently, we manage around two billion US dollars, uh, focusing mainly on cross-border investment between Japan and China, or Japan and other uh, East Asian countries. Um, therefore, to manage our investment, uh, we are headquartered in Tokyo, but we do have subsidiaries uh, in Beijing, Hong Kong, Bangkok. So uh, it's already a uh, multi-jurisdictional uh, set, set up of the for the corporate from the corporate tax viewpoint, and also uh, our investors are not only from Japan. We do have investors from the U.S., from China, uh, from different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So to provide a uh, tax uh, pass through. Uh, tax efficiencies, uh, we uh, often are using Cayman LPS, limited partnership structure, uh, for the distribution of the investment return. And, um, and, and finally, our investees uh, who are in China or Southeast Asian countries or US or in Japan, of course, uh, many of these investees are engaged in uh, multinational operations not operating in um, only in one, one, one jurisdiction. So therefore, uh, in my business, I have to deal with the tax issues uh, day to day at three levels. Uh, first level is for the corporate management as a fund management company. Secondly, uh, for the fund level where we gather the money from uh, across the world and invest across the world. And thirdly, for each investees, each company also have the cross-border elements. And, uh, and so uh, I do struggle, but uh, let me make my point clear that uh, we do have a tax planning, but uh, we never uh, evade the taxation. Uh, uh, to the contrary, the the big responsibility for the corporate managers uh, nowadays uh, is to pay the tax properly. But what's proper? Uh, uh, when uh, Paul mentioned that uh, many companies are not paying the tax properly, that's right. Uh, but uh, uh, from the viewpoint of, of the environment, from the viewpoint of the citizenships, uh, yes, uh, it, I understand it may sound uh, companies are improper in paying the tax. But uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, all the taxation is based on the registration. So there's a tax payment obligation without no registration. So it's uh, pretty much rule-based. Uh, activities that function that uh, we CEO of the listed companies are performing. Uh, if, of course, uh, uh, if I want to pay certain amount, uh, maybe it is good for the so society, maybe good for the environment. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I pay out of my goodwill, the amount of the money I'm paying is not even my own money, it's a company's money, eventually belongs to the shareholder. And uh, without the regulation, it's a donation. So uh, this, are very, this is a very difficult um, <clears throat> discussion where the ethical judgment comes in and where the rule-based treatment uh, prevails. Uh, and, um, and in reality, to fill the gap of the various regulations, 
uh, nowadays, uh, there are many efforts to bring in uh, 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 SDG or <clears throat> uh, 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 SDGs or uh, many social aspects, ESG uh, under the United Nations Treaty to make the management become more and more aware of the, what they, what kind of, uh, co good corporate citizenship responsibilities they do own against the society. And, uh, in the future, I do believe the taxation, uh, should also come into one of these issues, uh, but, uh, without having the global framework at the beginning. Uh, each CEO of the company who need, who has the fiduciary responsibilities to the, to the shareholders cannot, uh, judgmentally, uh, willing to spend more tax on, on, on behalf of the company. Uh, because everybody knows that, uh, the, the, the listed companies, uh, are valued by PR profit Earning uh, price, uh, 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 PER multiples or, or the PER shareholders, uh, equity and such and such. So, uh, these, uh, benchmarks, uh, use the earnings after taxation. So, which mm -hmm. means tax, tax is the pre uh, one, one of the deductibles, one of the costs, major costs are from the shareholders viewpoint. So, uh, it has to be treated in the same way that, uh, we need to control the tax, uh, but while abiding by all the require, requirement and the regulation. So, uh, it is a very difficult thing, but, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, on one side, we do understand the responsibility of paying the tax, but at the same time, our fiduciary duty, duty to the shareholder is not to overpay the tax. So, mm. yeah. Okay, thank you, um, I think I got your point that, uh, you know, um, you look after the clients, the corporates, uh, they need to make money, then you have money to pay tax. Um, so that was quite an interesting uh, round but there's a lot of, um, before coming on to these sections, uh, I did uh, ask around in terms of this particular phrase. Um, as you were now with COVID-19, um, we operate quite differently uh, with the uh, digital economy. Everything is going to virtuals and a lot of transactions is going digital. So um, we are moving from globalization to nationalizations. Um, most government now are looking at how, because of the... Um, um, situation of uncertainty they're facing with the pandemic. So the dilemma, of course, for the finance minister, the treasurer, is that how much can they recoup back, you know, to balance the book uh, mm. in terms of the stimulus. Um, uh, I know that even in China, uh, they are trying to trace back all the uh, uh, state-owned companies, overseas uh, uh, businesses, that, so they have to pay tax uh, to the country because the government need more money. So my question could be for all of you is that how does this um, new normal with the digital economy and the digital space play in taxation? So maybe I start out with Paul and then maybe go around. You might have your input because this will affect us directly, indirectly, because it's a different normal now. Paul, what about you, Paul? Yeah, well, I think that uh, the digitalization of our economy has had also an impact on Taxation, taxation revenues, uh, what you see, for example, uh, that Google and Facebook are omnipresent they are on everyone's phone, uh, yeah. yet they do not pay taxes in most countries, mm -hmm. uh, simply because and this is yeah, part of their, um, part of the, in the nature of the company, so to say, uh, but they use that also to avoid taxes, they're very well aware. Uh, and it's pretty well known that the biggest companies in the world, because these are the the, the, the five big American big tech companies, pay the least taxes. Mm -hmm. So that's unsustainable, and that's exactly what what also pushed the discussion in Paris in the OECD. Okay. We need we need to address this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and what you see is that the corporate tax system is outdated. It started the principle was adopted in 1919, 
Hmm. And at the time, <laughs> we had no globalization. Hmm. Everyone hmm. was at best exporting. Well, we didn't have any multinational corporation. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so that's and and can I because I was uh, triggered by uh, the excellent introduction by Mr. Toyoshima. Um, come back also to corporate responsibility. Uh, hmm. I understand that there you need to balance. Uh, the different stakeholders, because I don't think the shareholder is the only stakeholder. It's also the society, especially see it nowadays that you get support from the government, mm. uh, which shows that you stand on the shoulder of giants, right? So it's not that you you built on the past, you built on on, on the society. Mm. But one way to have corporate responsibility is uh, or responsible investment in the case of uh, Mercuria investment mm. is by uh, being very open on what you do. I mm. think that is within the ESG framework, it's the, we have the, the environmental, social, and governance. Mm. Most companies that are touching taxes are not open on this. So mm. openness on your side would be excellent way to start. So you, you don't have to um, always decide yourself, but say, okay, this is what I do. Tell me. Mm. Let's bring it out in the open and have that discussion, not just with your shareholder, but with other stakeholders as well. Uh, mm. People might have an opinion. And like I said, just to finish this, uh, especially in this time where, where companies get support from the government, mm. people are are expecting well, something in return. I can take the example of Booking.com in the Netherlands. Um, it's well known that they used the Netherlands to have tax breaks. It's all legal, by the way, right? So this is part of tax reform, but they end up paying uh, a rather moderate amount on their on their corporate profits. At the mm. same time, they applied for the government support uh, from, the, from the Dutch government. That led in my country to a fierce discussion. Are Is Booking.com allowed to do this? While they already right. don't pay taxes, they yeah. still get the support. And there you see the reciprocity between the mm. society and the corporate. So you, mm. you operate always within society, and, and, and that's one of your one of your stakeholders at least. That's interesting. I want to bring uh, Gustavo in actually um, uh, in terms of uh, fairness from the uh, from the corporate sector, and of course for them, you know, is about good tax planning um, in. Maybe some of the uh, technical giant, the the argument say that um, I don't pay tax because it's the way how I structure my my business. So, Gustavo, I'll be very interested to hear from uh, from your point of view uh, in terms of multinational operations, uh, the importance of the the fair competition, the tax structures, and um, at the end is all about social development and prosperity for everybody. So, I, I was very um, interested to hear your uh, remark on uh, this particular subject. Thank you. Uh, 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 yes, this is a, a, a very interesting topic. I I, I totally agree. Uh, and, and, and by the way, I'm not an expert in taxes, I, but uh, but of course, taxes is a, is a factor in the in the many of the decision decisions we make uh, day in day out. No? Uh, but as a as a Operational leader in, uh, in, 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 in my career, uh, tax was a consideration always in sourcing decisions, uh, and, and things like that, or, or where do we place our, our operations. And, it's a, it's a, and this tax consideration is uh, the one that we strive for is, is uh, in the industry, is how do we uh, deliver the purpose of what we are exist for, that we exist for, the service that we need to, that we do business by providing a service that is preferred by the people that buy our services. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and by doing that, we, we ignite, uh, improve life of people. And uh, we, uh, we uh, support socioeconomic development. And, uh, and, uh, and by doing that, we also, of course, make money. We sell what we produce and uh, we make a profit. Out of it. That's expected. And as part of doing making a profit out of it, um, of course, we we understand the, the role of tax section and uh, that we have to pay taxes. And actually, I, I, and sometimes I even make the joke that uh, the people that pay the most uh, um, that are more uh, um, set for uh, making sure they comply with. 
the regulations, laws, and, 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 and procedures that lead to payment taxes are corporate. Uh, uh, because, of course, you know, this visible, it's too big, etc. Many, many, many reasons why. And the, and the corporate employees are, are taxpayers almost by, by definition, and mm. uh, taxpayer by the rules. And taxpayer, the, in many cases, tax is withdrawn on the day to day basis and, uh, from, from directly from payroll. And so, in general, in general terms, this is a system that is set for compliance with what is required to do good business, to do good enterprise, to fulfill a purpose, and to drive prosperity. Uh, so when we, when a person like me, we talked about the differences and what, what, what should we do to make it, to make it a better, a better, a better um, and, uh, playground for everybody. What I, what I think about is normally, all right, go my mind goes directly to enabling this uh, playground to be in place uh, through a tax, a tax uh, structure that, uh, that uh, everybody can play to win the marketplace more than win the game of taxes. In other words, it is more important that we uh, define our products and our services and we deliver those products and services out there than, than a tax claim. A tax claim. And, you know, when, you, when you pay tax, it's because you're making money, which is great. And that's why you're doing what you're doing. And uh, when you don't pay taxes, it's because you didn't make money. But it has to be the transparent process that, that to do business, provide a service, and be responsible with our obligations. That's my point of view, and that's how I would, uh, I would address it. Um, mm. Fairness is not equality. Remember mm. that. The fairness is what helps us to really... Uh, all of the all of us being in a fair competition uh, 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 sometimes it's not not fair uh, so mm-hmm. it's fair that's, that's a big big conversation we might have but if fairness in this area is what enables um, free trade and free competition the best the best uh, service provider the best product provider wins the battle is preferred and, and chosen by the consumers, et cetera, mm. and, uh, 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 enabling free enterprise. Yeah. I have a problem when countries believe they can put fences to, uh, to develop internal, uh, to, to enable uh, acceleration of internal uh, uh, operations, internal production or whatever, they put fences uh, that, that will, in the long run, Limit those those uh, that country from the most potential, the, the highest potential uh, uh, prosperity um, uh, and, and, and socioeconomic development. Uh, and that is that is, to me is a big problem. So these protectionist uh, uh, strategies block uh, this sector of a, of a population from uh, uh, from being uh, have available to them. The best mm-hmm. of services and products, yeah, uh, and, and the long run more, more negative than positive. Uh, That's uh, a very interesting observation, Sir Mark. And uh, I become as we, we can see that there are many stakeholders involved in um, uh, taxation um, globally. You know. Uh, okay. uh, in, in my first round of the speech, I spoke from the viewpoint of the private sector manager. But now, uh, going back to my experience uh, with the World Bank, uh, so uh, in principle, I'm a firm believer of democracy and free trade openness. But unfortunately, uh, that is him abide by certain basic agreement. 
and at least、uh, for the free trade,、uh, there was the kind of、uh, gut has developed into WTO and the idea of WTO prevailing the transitional economy for most socialist co- countries has really contributed to the expansion of the、uh, global economy. That's for sure. And I, I, I was very much excited about that uh, uh, even after quitting World Bank and moving on to the investment businesses. But the dark side of that is that uh, uh, tax harmonization did not,、uh, was not well, well reflected、uh, into, within the WTO arrangement because、uh, each government considers tax as a kind of sovereign matter and do not want the multinational to, to pinpoint you have to do this or do that on the tax issues. So, The, the company's corporate activities is actually going across the border, spreading and grow under the global integration. But、uh, it is the government、uh, who is very slow in exchanging the information and, the non- and cannot keep up with the tax treaties or the multinational arrangement. I know that、uh, OECD is doing the B,、uh, BEPS initiative,、uh, which is a harmonization,、uh, but、uh, they are trying to engage over 100. Countries all over the world, which is very, very difficult、uh, politically and bureaucratically.、Uh, but it is so easy to destroy all that effort by just creating some loopholes and one or two tax havens. So the effort to harmonize everything is always being easily distracted by some authoritarian government or some loopholes or tax havens. So Finance industry, which is different、uh, from the Gustavo's supply chain industry. Supply、mm-hmm. chain industry is much to trace.、Yeah. However, uh, information industry and finance industry is so difficult to、mm-hmm. trace. Uh, being generated. Okay, so we have、uh, three minutes uh, left. Uh,、okay. so、can I go around? You know, if there's something that we haven't. Uh, by, by, by Mr. Corey,、um, we will end up in a world. Economy and the national democracy are at odds.、Mm-hmm. So you need to have this international.Wish uh, uh, there is more understanding. Of declaring and doing what is right.
come into one agreement. But uh, similar to ESG, at least for the big players, And to finish off, so, so sorry, I got to cut you off. Yes. Uh, can I thank all of you actually for your contributions? It's been very enjoyable. 